Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Today, we continue our exploration of the early scientific data from NASA's historic Parker Solar Probe mission to the Sun. In part one, Dr. Donald Scott began his analysis of some of the most intriguing early findings including the probe's, quote, unexpected detection of magnetic reversals as it moved in the plasma solar environment. As one new report describes, unexpectedly, the probe also detected a series of flips in the sun's magnetic fields, dubbed switchbacks, as streaming winds of plasma flowed past the spacecraft. During these periods, the magnetic field suddenly reversed itself by 180 degrees, and then, seconds to hours later, flipped back. As Dr. Scott continues, he explains why these so-called switchbacks could be the telltale signs of the Birkeley currents hypothesized by the electric sun model. Uh, in describing the switchbacks or magnetic reversals the Parker probe has seen, the press release stated, quote, these reversals happen at a high rate of occurrence. That high rate is surprising. In fact, the nature of these structures remains unknown. Well, we can help them with that, I think. But anyway, we know that the Parker probe is traveling at a speed of approximately uh, 430,000 miles an hour. Now, that's fast. It's, in fact, it's uh, 190 kilometers per second. And so in, in a couple of minutes, the probe travels about 15,000 kilometers. So that distance could very well be the thickness of one of the layers in the Birkeley current, which would be the cause of those magnetic reversals as it goes through the, the Birkeley current. The press release also announced that close to the sun, the solar wind seems to get sped up by powerful rogue waves, quote unquote, that move through the magnetic field. The quote from the press release states, quote, we'd suddenly see a spike in the flow where in just a couple of seconds, the solar wind would start flowing at 300,000 miles an hour faster. That's about 134 kilometers per second increase in the speed of the solar wind that they're observing. And if the velocity of the wind is about 400 kilometers a second, the press release said they were doubling the speed. It's not quite doubling. Also, they quote, they said there are jets of plasma in these streamers. Well, I maintain that the increases in the solar wind speed may indeed be caused by double layers. Now, in the, in the past, our viewers have seen this image that uh, I've included here the, of what a double layer looks like. So just to refresh the viewer, there are three three plots there. The top graph is the voltage uh, that we would measure as a function of radius distance out from the sun. So you can see that the voltage is dropping rather precipitously from point C to D to E, and that results in the middle plot, which is the electric field that is produced by that sharp drop in voltage. Now, there's nothing mysterious about that electric field. It's just the force on a positive ion and if the electric field is positive, as you see it, there it is, that means that the force on that positive ion is outward in the positive direction. Outward is the, from the sun is the positive direction. So the bottom plot uh, there is the plot of the charge distribution that would be there to cause what those other two plots look like. That's from Maxwell's equations. But uh, if we look at the charge distribution there, you can see that there are two uh, spherical shells, one of positive ions, and then right on top of that, a shell of negative charges, mostly probably electrons. And that's why it's called a double layer. The plus and the minus layer are right there together. And there are two different spherical shells in that double layer. The inner half, the inner one, is positive, and the outer half is, is negative. And in between, in the, in the center of that, that double layer is an extremely strong electric field. Now, that, that electric field, if it's strong enough, can actually rip apart any charged intruder into the double layer. So the Sapphire experiment that everybody has been hearing about and it's uh, worked out so well for us, that experiment produced an image of a whole series of these double layers surrounding the anode, the sun. And the most powerful one is right there above the, or actually on the surface of the anode. And that's completely consistent with Jurgen's electric sun model. 
because that's the photosphere. That's where the sunspots all happen, and in that double layer, uh, all sorts of things occur. And then as you go out from, the, from that layer, outward from the sun, the double layers get dimmer and weaker. You can see them finally disappear off in the distance. And we don't see any of those double layers around the sun with our eyes or with telescopes now, simply because they're, if they're there, they're in the dark mode of plasma operation. They're in the same mode of plasma operation that surrounds the North Pole of the Earth, and uh, that's the dark mode. We don't see that either, unless, of course, there's an aurora, and at which time the, the, the plasma jumps into the glow mode, and as it, as it did in that photograph that, uh, that Monty uh, so kindly sent us. But normally it's not visible. It's a dark mode plasma, and so are those double layers around the sun. Also, and things are happening very quickly these days, in a new paper entitled Probing the Energetic Particle Environment Near the Sun, the authors uh, seem to acknowledge that magnetic reconnection can't actually explain some of the effects they're observing. I was waiting, um, <laughs> predicting that we would hear about magnetic reconnection, but I'm very pleased that they have essentially written that off, at least in this paper. And... Uh, they, they said, instead, we find a variety of energetic particle events accelerated both locally and remotely, including by co-rotating interaction regions and impulsive events driven by acceleration near the sun and an event related to a coronal mass ejection, unquote. But so they use the word co-rotating. And I wonder if by using the word co-rotating, did they actually mean counter-rotating. Uh, nothing more was said, and uh, so we'll have to wait to see what, what they have discovered. But they've discovered everything that they have discovered is certainly explainable by, by Birkeland currents. Also, incidentally, regarding the question of how all those other elements get onto the face of the sun that we discussed earlier, uh, one of the most important results of the Sapphire team was their discovery that in their electrical plasma discharge, and remember, that was in a hydrogen atmosphere, just like the sun is hydrogen. The transmutation of elements occurs. That's the kind of process that the old prehistoric alchemists were looking. They wanted to change lead into gold or something like that. Well, actually, Sapphire has done it in microscopic amounts, but they've done it so that in a plasma discharge, hydrogen apparently can give birth to a long list of other elements not just one other, uh, that were not there before the discharge started. So that may well be how those other elements got onto the sun and get onto the sun as we speak. And the point is, fairy dust has nothing to do with it. <laughs>